Are you trying to figure out why Google Ads isn't spending the full budget you've selected and you really want to get your ad seen by more people, start getting some clicks and some sales? Well, in today's video, I'm going to show you exactly how to do that. I'm going to show you five ways to get Google to actually spend your budget so you can start getting your ads seen by people so you can start making some sales. First off, I do want to mention what I mean by spending your full budget, and that is in Google Ads, you're able to set a daily budget. And let's say, for example, we set our daily budget to $100 and we see that our actual results are we're spending $20 a day. This isn't where we want to be. We want to be spending around $100. Are we going to spend $100 every single day? No, because Google's going to actually adjust for this and figure out that certain days are going to be more profitable, we're going to get more leads. So it may cut back on certain days, we may spend only $60, $70 on a certain day. And then the next day, we might spend 150 even more than that. However, what we want to be seeing is that Google is going to spend our entire budget over the course of a month, because we actually want to get our ads seen that way we can start making some sales. So it's important to note, not every single day is going to spend a hundred out of a hundred dollars, uh, but we should be very, very close to that number. That being said, let's go over five ways to get Google ads to actually start spending your budget. Now, the first and probably the most easiest way to actually get Google to start spending your own budget is one to actually start adding more keywords. Keywords impact the amount of search volume we're going to get, which is the number one factor in determining whether or not our ads are going to be seen. The more search volume we have, the more eligibility we have for our ads to show and the more likely we are to spend money because more people are going to see our ads and the more likely they are to click on our ads. Therefore, we're going to spend more budget. Now, if we only have a handful of keywords, we're going to be in a very difficult situation. And that is because we're just not going to have enough eligibility to show there's not going to be enough search volume. So say we only have two or three keywords in our account, we may only be eligible to show up for 100 times a month. If we add 15, 25, 100 keywords into our account, we're going to be eligible to show up a lot more. So it's very important to have enough keywords. Now, people often ask me how many keywords should I have in an account? I generally suggest starting off small and then scaling. However, you don't want to start too small. So I would suggest having at least 25 keywords in an account to start off with. That way we can start seeing some search volume come in and actually start seeing some results. Another thing we can do with keywords is simply change the match type. If we have all our keywords on exact match, we're going to greatly limit the amount of search volume we're eligible to show up for and the amount of times our ads can display. And what we can do is simply change exact match, to either phrase match or broad match, and we're going to be eligible to show up a lot more. However, you need to be careful with this because broad match is very vague and it will target just about anything. It will go after your competitors. It will go after things that aren't even really relevant to you. Like if say you're doing an HVAC company, it might go after HVAC tips and tricks. That's not really something with high buying intent that we want to go after. So it's very important that you're going into your search terms report on a regular basis and adding negatives if you choose to use broad match. Same with phrase match or exact match, but broad match is a lot more lenient. So you have to do this a lot more often. But keywords and match types are two very important factors that determine whether or not your ad spend is actually going to spend. Now, the second thing we can do is simply turn on the search partners network. The search partners network is a great way to boost search volume. You're going to get access to a whole bunch more networks Google is partnered with. And I don't always love the search partners network, but if you need more search volume, it is a great way to increase it because you're going to have access to so many more partner networks. Now, this can simply be done by going into settings, hitting the actual partners network, and then just checking it on. What I would recommend doing is watching this partner network very carefully. You can go in and actually change this in the column settings, but making sure this is actually converting well and you're getting a good conversion rate and you're getting a good cost per lead. Sometimes you can experience more click fraud on these partners networks as they're not as monitored as Google's search engine. So it's important to make sure you're actually seeing good results. You're getting a good cost per click. You're getting good conversion rates. You're getting a good cost per lead. All that's important. You have to do that everywhere in the account, but this is something you should definitely check in every so often just because these search partners network tend to waste a little bit more money than the actual normal search engine. Method number three to actually increase our ad spending and start getting our ads shown is to simply up the bid limit of whatever bid strategy we're using. So if we're using maximize clicks, which I generally recommend most campaigns start off with because we find that it's the best way to collect data very, very quickly for most accounts. Uh, if you have this set too low, it's not going to spend all of your actual ad spend and that's going to cause a lot of problems. So what I see a lot of people do is they just set it too low and they either get absolutely no clicks whatsoever or they set it just enough that they start getting some impressions and some clicks, but they don't see enough results. Sometimes you actually have to go in and up it. What you can do alternatively to this is simply uncheck the bid limit 
and let it run for a day or two and then see the actual results what your normal cost per click is coming at if it's right around the same then clearly there wasn't a bid limit but if it does go up a substantial bit like 25 50 percent then you can realize that hey i was underbidding when it came to this the same thing applies with target cpa maximize roas all of these are very, very similar. If you put a target cost per acquisition of let's say $50 and Google realizes that, hey, there's no way I can get a lead for $50, uh, it's just not going to bid and you're going to see very, very few impressions and clicks. So it might be worth unchecking that or just simply upping it by a few dollars and seeing what happens. Number four, when it comes to increasing ad spend, and that is quality score. And quality score, if it is too low, you're going to see very limited impressions, very limited clicks because Google does doesn't really like your ad. If you have a quality score of one or two, even three, you're going to see very limited impressions because Google, again, just doesn't like your ad. So what you have to do is figure out why your quality score is low. I just wrote an entire ebook on this of simplifying essentially the three factors that go into determining whether or not a keyword is going to have a high quality score and simplifying the solutions to all of that. I really like this ebook and you know, I just published it. So I'm kind of proud of it. Uh, but that being said, when it comes to quality score, you have to figure out why your quality score is so low. This could be a click through rate problem. So it has something to do with your ad. It could be a landing page problem. So maybe the conversion rate is really low and Google will give you a pretty good idea of what is wrong. If you go into your landing page experience in the actual column section, it might say below average landing page experience. And that might be a good indicator that, hey, we have to go in and redo our landing page because clearly Google doesn't like it. Once we can start increasing our quality score, our cost per click is one going to go down, which is really nice. And two, our ads are going to be seen more often because essentially how the Google ads auction system works is it multiplies bid limit by the actual quality score. And this is really nice because Google realizes that, hey, even though someone may have a lower budget, so say we're bidding $5 and our quality score is a nine or a 10, our ad may appear over someone that has a bid limit that is higher than us, but a lower quality score because Google deems our ad more relevant and it's willing to give us a discount because Google only wants to show the most relevant information. And that's a really good way of essentially sifting through good ads versus bad ads. Again, Google changes all of this stuff and that's how essentially the theory was for a very long time. It's changed and Google doesn't actually tell us the exact formula for determining who appears first in the actual ranking system. But for the longest time, that was the formula that was used. And realistically, it's still used for the most part. So make sure your quality score is above at least a three. Uh, if it's below a three or a three, you're going to see limited search impressions. And really, uh, that's something that you have to look into for your account to run well and for Google to really spend your full budget. Now, the fifth and final thing we can do is go into our location settings and expand the area. If we have a very limited location. So say we're only targeting one small city with maybe 50,000 people living in it. And we want, you know, a hundred dollars ad spend a day. And our cost per click is like 50 cents or something like that. We're going to struggle to spend our entire budget, especially if this isn't search that often. So what we can do is go into our location settings and actually expand the area. So what we could do is say we're targeting a 50 mile radius, we could expand that to a hundred mile radius. Now this isn't applicable for all businesses because a lot of business are kind of isolated to where they can go to if they are a service based business, you can only go so far. But if you can add a few more cities, you can really up the amount of potential searches your ads can display for and you can get a whole bunch more clicks and your account will actually start spending some money, which is really nice. Another caveat is I'd go into the actual location settings and make sure that the actual advanced location settings are set properly. You don't want to target people interested in the city. You only want to target people who are actually in the city, which is something that is super important, often overlooked and usually uh, is not checked off in most Google accounts we audit. So so that's something also to help save you a little bit more money. Now I do have one bonus tip for you. And that is if you are very limited on actual search results, and you're only running one campaign, you could also try a second campaign. So say you're running just a search campaign, you could also try implementing call only ads, or maybe even a display ad into that, which could really help with allowing Google to show your ads a little bit more often and for you to actually be eligible for more search results, which is what we're aiming for. So you can spend more of your budget. If you want to learn how to actually create a call only campaign, they're super simple 
simple, super easy to set up and a great addition to almost every single account in Google ads. I'll link up a free tutorial up above. Super, super useful. And I think most businesses uh, really like high quality phone call leads into their business. Now I do have one massive favor to ask, and that is for you to leave a like I put so much effort and energy into these videos nowadays. And I really do appreciate everyone who is liking these videos. These videos are actually just getting an amazing amount of views. And really, I do appreciate all of you who do choose to like the video. So thank you in advance if you do choose to like the video. Other than that, if you have any comments, questions or concerns, leave a comment down below. I'd be happy to answer it. Other than that, you guys have a wonderful day and take care. I wish you all well. So long.